All right, welcome to another edition of 10 Minutes With. It is actually early Friday morning, um, so early that I drank my coffee in less than five minutes this morning, which is pretty unusual for me. So uh, as you can see here, we're, we're joined with a guest. Hi, Kate, by the way. Hey, thought you forgot about me. You know, I'm right here. I can't forget about you. You're, you're right there. <laughs> So anyway, as you can see, our guest is uh, joining us from uh, from the state of Michigan. And if we uh, we do the uh, the little mitten thing, you're you're right about here. Is that about right? Or am I? Is it? Uh, what, yep, farther west. So it's, far, I'll, farther I'll west? show it to you. Yep. We're, today we're in Kindy, which is about right here. Okay. For the thumb there. You're thinking I'm around, in around Tawas there. <laughs> that would be that would be a nice spot to be. But I'm up here around Kindy, some my, area. My my wife is actually from Michigan. She lived in suburban Detroit for about I don't know twenty years, fifteen twenty years. So I I, I, I at least know the references you can see. But uh, yeah, uh, you're getting there. <laughs> yeah, or uh, you throw out some of these these town names, and you know I, I have no idea where, where you're referring to. But uh, um, our guest today is the host of the Tom Green podcast. Please welcome Tom Green. How's it going, guys? Great to be with you. Yeah, well, I'm, we're finally, uh, this is long overdue. We're glad to, to finally sit down with you. So Certainly, it's been quite a busy ride since uh, joy, even joining you guys at first, which I'm sure we're going to be talking about. But yes, it's been quite a ride so far. And, and your your story, too, is is one that, you know, it, it's, well, before we go into the, the podcast, we'll, we'll talk about this, but your, your story of how we found you was uh, pretty unique. Um, you know, you're, you're obviously, Certainly. you have a goal of, of working in sports, you have a, a broadcasting background, you work in, in radio today, but can you tell us a little bit about, you, you kind of had this moment where it was time to invest in yourself. How did, how did that go? Certainly, well, I will go about this the, as professional as I can, but I worked for six years as a cashier at Essexville Kroger's back in Essexville, and I did a lot of public address announcing for Essexville Garber, which on occasion now I still do, but because of the COVID restrictions and all that, things have gotten nuts. But before then, I decided to leave Kroger's, and it was because I had then been there six years. There was, I felt there was a lot of tension there, and uh, to me, I felt the tension was unnecessary, at least to go for my career, and I'm like, you know, Six years into this job, I have a bachelor's degree in a different field. Why don't I pursue this field and get out of the toxicity that I feel here? Was it the way that I would recommend people going out? Not necessarily, but I felt that it was time to move on. And I felt that the path that I was going to go on was going to be hard, but it was going to be well worth it. And so far, it, in fact, day one, it landed with you guys. So I was glad to have that support with me through day one, and here we are now working in radio. But yes, it was a hard decision to make, but over a year out now, I'm kind of glad I made it, and things have been working out. Not entirely, but of course, COVID has had a word or two about that. <laughs> you know, it always seems like I know people that have like a epic I quit story from Kroger, and... The one that immediately comes to mind, my younger brother worked at there for a few years uh, when he was in high school and college. And the day he decided he was going to quit, he went into his manager's office, and I don't think he really had any problems there, but this is just who he is and, and what he does. And Kate, this is going to explain a whole lot. Uh, he walked into his manager's office, and he told his manager he quit. But before he quit, he was wearing his, you know, his Kroger polo shirt. And he did the Hulk Hogan where he like ripped his shirt in half and just like <laughs> shirt in half. And, you know, he's wearing his undershirt underneath, but he, uh, he left the shirt on his manager's door and walked out. <laughs> uh, but yes, that's, Kate, I'm the sane one of, of my siblings. If, you know, and, and she's probably shaking her head like, no, that can't be true. But it, it is, it is. I am the sane one of the family. That's a scary thought, just in general. So, so Tom, <laughs> getting back into it, you, you, know, you run your own podcast. You, we'll get into this a little later, but it always seems like wherever you go, you, you're always mingling with 
the on-air talent. You're running into athletes, celebrities in the stand many times. Like you, you, you posted a picture with I, I was an I believe an Olympian at a Lions game what recently or last year. Oh yes, <laughs> and then we're almost we're almost reaching a year since that point. Um, not just, Steve Lucas, who I had met. Yeah, I was like, I, I would never in my life recognize these people. How how does it like how do you always end up? finding these people and mingling with them and networking like how, like what's your your technique well <laughs> it's definitely a good question to ask um i do pay a lot of attention to little details and i can rec i can recognize faces in the crowd by but, but i will say i don't recognize bet the backs of people because i have had to kind of scout out different people in different ways but yes um you, you kind of have to, I follow quite a few people, of course, and um, it's kind of a bit of tri trial and error and a walk, I guess, is the, <laughs> I guess is the right way to do it. But every, every time I go, I try to mingle around with people, you know, to get my name out there. It's, it's definitely a huge thing in this business. And in fact, one of my, one of my professors at Saginaw Valley State, Dr. Bill Williamson, had even said in a class that I was in, whenever Tom goes to games, he talks to people. And so it's, it's kind of a unique personality trait I have, but I figure, I figure, I figure that is, you know, what, how can you get your name out there without doing it in that way? And I, I have unique ways of going about that, especially with uh, Nastia Lucan, who was dating Sam Martin at that time, the punter for the Lions. Okay. And so I, I saw that she was there. And so I was trying to shout her in the stands and about 12, I cut out. 12, 15, I'm like, there's Nastia. I better go talk to her. And there you are. And lo and behold, there, there you are. And there it was. <laughs> Just like, I have a hard time, like, if, if I saw one of my coworkers who I, well, until pandemic, that I would see five days a week, if I saw them out in public, <laughs> I probably wouldn't even recognize them. <laughs> I'm so bad. Well, that's because they're wearing disguises to hide from you. Oh, that, okay. That makes much more sense now. Okay. I thought it was just, I'm just dense, but. No, I know from experience from back when we worked together, we all wear disguises to avoid you. At least Kate admitted I'm not dense. So that's, that's a start. So. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing with working in the office too, is you kind of want to avoid the people that you work with <laughs> outside of work. That is true. Especially if they have toxic vibes. You don't want to get, get away from those. <laughs> So I don't think we even started a timer today, which I... No, we did. Oh, we did. We did. But hey, whatever. We're, we're blowing past this anyway. It's, this is more for the joke. So let's, let's get right into it, Tom. Why, sure. why did you start a podcast? Like, what was the inspiration behind that? Well, the inspiration for the podcast goes back many years, actually. 2007. I was in, well, was in sixth grade, and I was about to go in the seventh. And one of the aides at my school at Kramer Junior High, Diane Ross, had told me, my son is doing the PA for the Essexville Jaguars, which is a team with my husband coaches. Do you want to do the PA for that after he graduates? And I'm like, sure. So October of that year, I go to Elmer Engel Stadium, Bay City Central, for my first game doing the PA. Kirk Ross, which was Diane's son, was helping me do that. And Trenton Robinson who played for the um, now Washington football team, even though I call them the team with no name. Yeah. America should have sponsored that, by the way. Um, San Francisco <laughs> 49ers, Carolina Panthers, um, had been in the booth that day helping out. And so I, and I actually have the story of I tried to convince him to go to Michigan. Well, unfortunately, he was in the only class in football that swept Michigan and Michigan State. So that's how that story went. But just having that story – actually trying to influence an athlete to go to a team that I love <laughs> kind of motivated me a bit. And of course, in the year, in the years going on, I love talking sports, especially back on the YouTube channel in high school. And so when podcasting started to become a thing, I was told you should start a podcast. And so I actually did it from my truck using my phone back in 2016. And once I started to get equipment, then the podcast evolved to Apple and Anchor and all that. But that's kind of how things get started was the motivation from the networking at first and then talking sports all the time. People are like, Hey, you should start a podcast. And so I did. 
So what should a listener expect when listening to your podcast? A listener should expect, um, of course, the, I, uh, let, let's say, um, funny sidetrack conversations like we have had so far, but I do try to keep things on, on point. Uh, fair and honest analysis. I do talk about my teams, Detroit and U of M, but of course with NBA and of course that different NFL stuff when we get to the playoffs or um, MLB, I will talk about what the general national spectrum is for that. So fair and honest analysis, good reporting from me, me and or the guests. And of course, funny asides because we're all human and we like to laugh. And that's especially what I like to do and bring to the station, of course, and my own show. Got to keep things light, especially in this type of world. That is true. And on a side note, too, my, my wife actually went to state. <laughs> well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> it's, uh, yes, it's, it's a big Ten household here. So it's, uh, which, you know, I went to Purdue and Purdue has not beaten Michigan State now in like 13 years in football or something like that. But Drew Brees is my fantasy franchise quarterback. So I'll give you guys, I'll give the Boilermakers that. It's, it's great because, you know, it's, it's, it's obviously a, a, you know, a legendary figure comes to your school or plays for your school, which doesn't happen to many schools. But at the same time, it's like there hasn't been a ton. I mean, there's been some great players that have come out of Purdue since then, but it's like mm -hmm. I think we could put out somebody that in, in football that would stand up the test of time more than once every 20 years, but – Hey, of course, one of the best college football stories in the past few years came out of that school, and that was the Tyler Trent story. Yes. And uh, I'm grabbing my prop. You started him. You got it. See, when we, we sat down with John Anderson the other week from ESPN, we, uh, we talked about that too, and I, I had to pull out my, got my uh, bobblehead here. So There you go. And your house isn't a mess. That's a surprise cause, because of Wipeout. <laughs> Yeah, actually, this room is not a mess. This is the room that's off limits from my children. Every other room in the house uh -huh. is right now. So <laughs> I see. <laughs> okay, where were we? <laughs> What's a piece of advice that you could give a new podcaster? Oh, certainly. A uh, piece of advice I would have is a real, really for podcasting and for a career, of course, is don't ever give up. There are certain things that are going to happen. There are certain high points and low points that, you, that you're going to have within a podcast or within a career. There may be a point where nobody is interested in your craft and you may have to try something different. Just don't give up. Keep pushing. A lot of people say that and it's, and it's actually the truth. There have been some low points over the year. And of course, COVID has had a thing or two to say about a lot of our job perspectives, but you're starting a podcast. Be original. Be yourself. Of course, in a professional aspect. Or, of course, if you want to go the explicit route, just say before, beforehand that you do go that route. But um, be, be authentic. Be yourself. Because as Don Mitchell from Fox 9 in Minneapolis told me, people can smell fake from a mile away. Mm -hmm. Be authentic and be yourself. And the right things will happen. Just give it time. So be yourself when starting a podcast and don't be afraid to reach out because people, people will be interested in hearing you just stay, be yourself and be professional. And, you know, on top of that, you know, you've, for those who, who follow you on social media, you, you're kind of using that to build your, your portfolio and, and, you know, you, you read the news, you do the sports, I believe you call, you call it the sports minute on your, your radio station. <laughs> Yes, I call it the Sports Minute. They call it the Sports Report, just kind of how we do it. Yeah, it's, you know, it's radio, but <laughs> yeah. Talk, talk to us about how, you know, even though you're not directly in what you're, you're wanting to do or your ultimate goal, like, you know, tell us about how that related experience has is, is actually helped build you up over the last year, um, you know, as far as exposure, uh, just general experience, you know. Well, the best or the best radio and TV and broadcasters, even in sports and news, are multi are multi crafted. 
In fact, um, somebody that has definitely helped me along, Meredith Gorman out of Nezen, wrote obits in the Boston Herald for a year. So they, the, the path the path goes in its separate ways. In fact, even as you guys know, I did some substitute teaching for a couple of months before all before the radio and before COVID hit. Sometimes the wind just, uh, if, you, if you want to call it like this, sometimes the wind just grabs you and takes you to different places. And for me, it was first substitute teaching and then doing the news and then COVID hit because I was hitting a point to where it's like, you know, I want to get back into my sports coverage and I want to do it kind of now. I want to see what the market's out there. And then when I hit that point, COVID hit. And I'm like, well, COVID could not have hit at a better time for me because now I can can just ground here for a little bit. And once this all boils over, I'll have enough experience perhaps to get somewhere. You know, it's kind of, a, lot, <clears throat> a lot of broadcasters will tell you, and I will to sell it as well, you need to have probably about a year of experience at least to get to bigger markets. And that's kind of what I want to get to as a bigger market, like where Kate's at Chicago or where you are at in Arizona. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure Phoenix would not want to sink for me, but they are sinking an inch every year. <laughs> but that's also another thing is kind of knowing a few factoids and whatnot. So uh, people take different career paths and, you just got to just stick with it and keep applying to them with a lot of different places and people will listen to you. Exposure is key. Well, of course, not to COVID. Stay away from that. But uh, exposure to experience in radio and broadcasting and all that is key. You got to get it because people are looking for experience. Mm -hmm. So, Kate, I'll hand it over to you for the last question. What's your spirit dinosaur? That's not the last question. <laughs> spirit dinosaur. Well, maybe the T-Rex. <laughs> oh, so you want the real last question. Yeah. <laughs> Where can people find you? All right. Well, what? just like on my podcast, we asked the tough questions. A couple of weeks ago for the Packers show with Matt Freilich, I was asking him, what kind of cheese do you wear on your head? Is it Limburger? Is it Swiss? Is it American? I want to know what's actually in that cheese. <laughs> it's head. cheddar. It always but, comes there you go. Chad, oh, 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 you answered it pretty straight. So that, that tells me that you are a, an unfortunate fan. That's, that's no, bad. Actually, I lived oh, in Milwaukee no. for five years. Well, still unfortunate, but <laughs> where can you find me was the actual question. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram, of course, but Twitter at Tom TV 23 is the personal Twitter at Tom green pod is the podcast Twitter. Um, I always post up there. And of course you guys always post the show at 20 after the next hour after right. it's originally posted. And so a lot, lots of different ways you can find me. Of course, LinkedIn, I'm very active on there as well. But, of course, main ways to find me is Tom, Tom TV 23 Tom Green Pod on Twitter, Instagram. But do not be afraid to reach out. Awesome. Tom, yeah. thanks, uh, thanks for taking time to sit down with us this morning. Certainly. Definitely had a good conversation, a lot of laughs. And, of course, people might meme the T-Rex little thing that I did there a few minutes back. Yeah, that, but you know, that's part of the game. So <laughs> it's always <laughs> fun with that. It, it's always like when we, we do the full interview at the end, Kate asked her five like off topic questions. And it's like, we, we talked to these, you know, you know we, we've talked to people who have been on TV for many years. We've talked to people that have been on radio for many years. We've, we've talked to a member of the white house press corps. And then she asked her off the wall questions, and then that's what trips them up. It's like I can always count on her to do that. <laughs> it's fun. It is. So, uh, DJ, how do we find us? I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same <laughs> feel I give at the end of every episode. So, thanks everybody for watching and listening today. Check us out at Stadium Scene. Uh, well, Stadium Scene TV. <laughs> I say it that I, I literally preface it with I say the same thing every time and then I botch it. Like, go figure. So check us out at stadiumscene.tv. Join the network. 
at Station Scene on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest, and Stadium underscore Scene on Instagram. And even though TikTok didn't get banned, you can follow us there, but nothing happens. So thanks again, and we'll talk to you next time.